Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Oldish TV. I'm wearing pink today because today is Wear Pink Day. For those of you who are watching us from other countries around the world, you may celebrate this on a different day, but Wearing Pink Day is something that we do here in Canada to show support for anti-bullying measures. Bullying is something that is often thought of as a behavior that happens in the schoolyard. The reality is it happens everywhere. It happens in school, it happens in recreational and social activities, it happens in the workplace, it happens amongst older adults, in long-term care. There is no place where bullying doesn't happen. Just so that we're on the same page, I'm going to read you a little definition of bullying. There are extensive definitions everywhere that you can get by simply Googling them, but here's where we can start. Bullying is the use of force, coercion, hurtful teasing or threat to abuse, aggressively dominate or intimidate. The behavior is often repeated and habitual. Okay. Now bullying can take place with one person bullying another. There's also another category of bullying called mobbing, where several people get together to bully one person. For an older adult, you can think of an adult child bullying mom or dad, or all of the adult children getting together and agreeing that this is the way things are to be, and they bully together, collectively, mom or dad. You can think of it like that. It doesn't only happen in families, though. It happens senior to senior. So it could be uh, a marriage partnership or a living together partnership. It can be in a friend circle where, you know, you've got a number of friends as a for instance, and the majority of them turn on one and just start to pick on them, put them down, make them feel less than, make them feel small. It can happen in um, a partnership or a marriage arrangement. Now, the older generation now, currently, frequently contains women who did not work outside the home. They didn't make their own money, at least not for many, many years. And that gave their partner the upper hand. There was an imbalance of power, and that is always the case where bullying is involved. There's an imbalance of power, either real or perceived. If you had a partner who made the money and brought it home and made decisions about how that money was to be spent and handed out, that was an imbalance of power. And I still run across women whose partners have passed on or perhaps they're in long-term care and they have no idea how to write a check. They don't know where the money is. They don't understand the investments. And that imbalance of power continues even though their partner is no longer with them. In the case of adult children, bullying mom or dad, it can take many forms. You know, they, they can want some things that you have, your money, your possessions, your home, your car. It, I mean, it can be anything and it can, it can start ever so politely. You know, mom, do you need a lift to the grocery store? Can I take you there? And that goes on for a while. And then it, it turns into well, mom, I take you there every week. You know, you owe me something. And before you know it, you're giving them money or control over some aspect of your life. If you don't do this, I won't do that. Does that sound familiar to any of you out there? In the workplace, it can happen with colleagues who sense a weakness or pick up on something that you're not doing, perhaps to 
the way that they want it done to a standard that somebody else has determined. And they start picking on you and making you feel that the work that you're doing is inadequate across the board. And they're doing that to make themselves look better, but I suppose also to exercise some demons within themselves. You know, bullies are usually pretty cowardly people. And in my experience, my personal experience, when you push back, they ramp up their aggression, but then they go away. That's a little harder for older adults who may be um, physically challenged to take on and maintain. I understand that. My suggestion would be that you start writing down, keep notes, a, a journal, if you will. Keep a journal of interactions that you have with people. Things that they want from you. What do they want from you? Things that you have offered or have refused. Things that you need from them. Deals or bargains that have been made with you. Just start writing down all of these behaviors that make you uncomfortable, that make you feel less than. Over time, you will start to see a pattern develop. If you can't see the pattern develop, it may be because you're not able to see things objectively. I understand, I understand. That can be the case with your children and you don't want to think the worst of your children. However, neither do you want to find yourself in a situation that you don't wanna be in. It is so important to live your life proactively, to make decisions for yourself. As I have said in the past over and over and over again, if you don't make decisions, eventually somebody else will. So it's so important to define the pattern of your life. And if you're living in a place where you are safe and secure and you have the life you want, and someone else is saying to you, perhaps an adult child, no, you've got to sell that place and you've got to come and live with us or you've got to be closer to us so that we can look after you. Maybe you don't need looking after. Maybe you do. I don't know. I don't know. But the looking after you should not make you feel less than. Looking after somebody is a loving behavior. Love is not demeaning. So you need to take all of that into consideration and look at who's around you and decide that you're not going to take it. Now, you don't want to decide you're not going to take it and put yourself in a dangerous physical position. You know, if you've got somebody who comes into the house who starts, you know, maybe it's somebody who comes in to do housework or repairs or bring your groceries. I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. If somebody starts coming in and demanding of you and being bigger than you and lording it over you and, you know, being angry with you, unless you do what they want you to do, that's a very potentially dangerous situation for you. I will tell you, no matter where you live, there is in your local police force at least one person, if not a unit, that looks after abuse and scams directed toward older adults. Do not be ashamed to go and see them. Take them your journal. Tell them what's happening. If you don't quite want to go that route, find a counselor. Show them your journal. Tell them what's happening. Ask for help in developing strategies. But you should never put yourself in a position with a bully that is potentially dangerous for you. And if you feel that, that danger at all, do not hesitate. Do not hesitate. Go and find the police and tell them what's going on and they will deal with it. Let them deal with it. They, they do it all the time. They do it every day. I'm sad to say they do it every day. Ageism is also another form of bullying. Now, ageism is when you're not heard. 
you feel that you're not seen, your opinions are not taken into account, derogatory names are used. Um, ageism can happen close to us, um, but it's it tends to be thought of as something that happens at a societal level where, you know, on television programs, for instance, the older person is marginalized. They're not the central character. We see in advertising that it's really only recently that older women have been used to um, demonstrate makeup products as a, for instance, despite the fact that the older generation has the money, has the power, are amazing consumers and have the time to do this because a lot of them are retired. Many industries have not yet recognized older adults. Personally, I think it's because they just don't know how. I don't think it's that they don't understand the buying power that older adults have. I think it's they don't have a clue how to market to older adults because it's a different style and they've never done it. I don't know, what do you think? Anyway, ageism can take a lot of forms, but it, it's generally um, calling someone a name, um, calling a generation by a name, old folks, those old folks over there. Well, that's ageism, old folks, in the connotation that is generally used, refers to people who are less than because they can't do something. They're not capable. They're, they're older and so their opinions count for less. Their behaviors count for less. Their abilities count for less. Ageism is something that you can literally push back on day after day after day by calling something out, whether it's on social media and you see a name um, and, and pushing back, by the way, should be thought of as education. A lot of times people don't realize that what they're, what they're doing in how they're referring to older adults is in fact ageism. So you have to point it out. I do, I do. It becomes tiresome because it happens so often, but you know, you can do that, but ageism, you know, as it gets closer and closer to you, it's bullying. It's actually bullying. So don't let people bully you. Stand up for yourself. Decide on the path for your own life. Have a plan, have objectives, have strategies to achieve what you want and desire in your life. And stand firm when somebody comes to you and says, I don't think you should do that. I want you to do that. If you don't want to do that, then don't do that. You don't owe them explanations. You don't owe anybody anything. This is your life. And you live your life the way you want. You should be able to live your life without being made to feel less than by anyone for any reason. I so encourage you to be strong and stand up for yourself, stand in your power and live the life that you want to, to live for yourself. Wear pink with me today and give some thought to anti-bullying strategies and programs that might have an impact on your life. I will see you next Wednesday at 12 noon. Until then, take care of yourself, take care of one another, and do remember that it takes a bully a long, long time to get his head wrapped around you or her head wrapped around you when you have the power, but it always takes a village to age a senior. Bye.